Hello, um, it's Monday after break, so time for some book talks. I actually did get a lot of reading done over the break. Um, part of that was because I was trying to finish my uh, 2020 goal of reading 100 books. Um, thank goodness for audiobooks and graphic novels, because that really helped me um, get to my goal. Um, some of the graphic novels that I read include, I had already read Paper Girls number one, so I read um, two through five, and I, apparently I need to order six for our library because I don't have it. Um, but if you like, um, see they start off in, in the 80s, they're, they're girls who deliver newspapers, that's why it's called Paper Girls. And there is an event, I'm not going to tell you everything about it, but it's a sci-fi series. There is time travel and explosions and crazy creatures. So if you like that sort of thing, check it out. Like I said, I've got one through five here and I'll be ordering number six. It was enjoyable and they're quick, uh, which was essential for me over the break. I also read these, Catstronauts. Um, it is cats in space. It's not deep. Um, it's it's kind of punny, a little silly, um, very quick. There is a prepare for lunch um, pun in every single issue. So if you like that sort of thing, if you like Cats in Space, um, I have that for you. Also, audiobooks, I'll show you real quick. I enjoy audiobooks in general, um, but I, spe I especially enjoy funny audiobooks. Um, when they're read by the author, that's even better. So this is one of the ones I listened to, The Greatest Story, oh, you can't see it very good. The Greatest Love Story Ever Told by Nick Offerman and Megan Mullally. So if you know who those people are, um, the characters that they play on TV are funny. They are also funny people in real life. You can also tell, um, the best thing about reading and listening to the audio version of this is because it is them and i cannot imagine that reading the print book would give you anywhere near the same experience because in the audiobook it seems like they're throwing extra things in that just aren't in the print book in period um, there's a section where they're looking at pictures of themselves from their childhood and they're describing them so obviously that's not going to be in the print book you would just have pages of photos but in the audiobook you get to hear them describe what's happening in the photos and it's often hilarious um, you also get to experience the chemistry between them you can really tell how close they are and how they genuinely love the, love each other and enjoy each other's company it was great there's also a bonus chapter at the end that is only for the audio version so if you like like i said if you like love stories if you like funny people um, it is a little bit adult in some parts but it's not going to scar you for life um, recommend it i got it on reads through our public library the greatest love story ever told um, i also listened to martin short i must say my life is a humble comedy legend um he's pretty funny i don't always like martin short comedy um but i did really enjoy his book um, and it, he reads it so like i said it adds a lot to it there are some emotional points in the book he experienced several tragedies in his life um his both of his parents died before he was 20. Um, he also had a brother that he was very close with who died in a car wreck you know unexpectedly and that had a, a big impact on him growing up um, and then also there's a chapter towards the end it's an autobiography so I can't spoil it for you but his his wife um, died of ovarian cancer and him describing the experience of going through that and afterwards I mean literally I'm bawling into my oatmeal so but I mean if you like that sort of thing if you like comedy and feels <laughs> Carrie's laughing at me in the background because who likes to cry in their oatmeal? I'm not the only one. It's not just me. <laughs> okay. Get it together back there. All right. Um, <laughs> another one that I listened to was Stephen Colbert's I Am America and So Can You. It's very short. It's like three hours or less hilarious okay I'm laughing out loud throughout this book and if you don't 
Stephen Colbert's not been on. I mean, he's on. He's got a show somewhere. I don't watch it, um, but he used to be on The Daily Show, and it's a it's a conservative character. So he's talking about his conservative beliefs, and it's meant to be funny, and it is. Um, I can see how maybe somebody would listen to this book and they would think he was serious, um, but I just laughed my guts out throughout. I recommend it. Um, if you have a sense of humor, you should listen to it. Okay, so book books. Actually, I took this print book home and then I found the ebook version on uh, Reads, so I read it on my phone. <laughs> but uh, it was good. I've been, I saw this book a while back and I was like, ooh, um, that looks very interesting. And I told Carrie about it. She's like, gross, who would want to read that? Um, but it's about um, a girl whose mother kills unnaturals, okay? So in this book, um, creatures exist. Sometimes they look like humans, sometimes they don't. For example, in this book, unicorns look like people. Um, I don't know if they can shapeshift or whatever. They didn't really talk about that, but they did talk about the fact that they, they feed on innocence. They, they somehow kill people in, in eating their innocence, and then other people will kill them, and you can grind their bones up and make an addictive drug, which is kind of an interesting concept uh, to me. Um, but the main character, what she does after her mother kills these creatures is she dissects them and cuts all their pieces up and packages them for resale on the black market. Well, towards the beginning of the book, um, her mother has captured this guy and the main character talks to him a little bit and she, you know, humanizes him and she's like, I can't, I can't cut him up. So she frees him and then she's abducted and sold onto the black market herself. That's like the very beginning of the book, so I'm not spoiling it for you. So all the rest of the book is her experiences in the black market and the stuff she has to do, and there's some moral dilemmas, there's a little bit of touching on some, some kind of romantic um, possibilities between her and another character. I really enjoyed it though, so if you like kind of weird, grisly, um, paranormal stuff, it's going to be in our horror section, um, then, then check it out. It's called not even bones and I'm, I'm reading the sequel right now last one um it took me a while to get into this book for some reason i love patrick ness i've read everything that patrick ness has put out except for maybe two books and i'll read them eventually um, but for some reason it's hard for me to sit down with a print book here lately i have to be really strategic about it i have to put it where i'm going to be doing something else like eating or whatever, because I can't do other things while I'm looking at this book except maybe eat. Um, so I, I read them in little bits and pieces where I have to actually force myself to go into my room and sit down and, and read it and do nothing else, uh, which I did once I got maybe a third of the way in here. Um, once I got maybe to a third of the way in, I got really into it. Um, but it is set in the 50s. So you've got like the Red Scare, you've got racism, but you also have dragons. Like, dragons are just accepted in this world. Everybody's known about dragons forever. Dragons just exist, just like, you know, whatever. Um, but there, there's an unease between humans and dragons. They don't really trust each other. Dragons don't eat people or kill people normally, but at the beginning of this book, one does, and it's a big deal. Um, but you've also got this group of people called the Believers who worship dragons and would love to be dragons, would love to do the bidding of dragons. Dragons don't really care about them, but they exist. Um, but there is an assassin. You don't know who he's going to kill. There's a dragon who's killed somebody. And then there's a, a detective who is hunting the assassin. So you've got all this stuff going on. Um, and I'm not gonna tell you more about it, but if you like dragons, um, the historical part isn't really super important. Not super, super important, it's just setting. Um, but Burn by Patrick Ness. Check it out. All right, and that's all for today. It's kind of long-winded, but I will see you later.